name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. Well, good morning and welcome to this service on Mothering Sunday from the benefits of Gruby and Ratby. Whoever you are, wherever you may be, and whenever you may be able to join us, you are welcome in this virtual space as we come together in the power of Christ across time and space to worship. Our order of service, if you wish sight of it, can be found on our Church Near You websites, looking under the churches of Gruby or Ratby for our online Sunday worship and the attachment that you'll find there. If you would like to join in with the parts in bold, you're very welcome to do so. But of course, it's just as good to sit and listen and be with us in our worship. The words for our songs will come up on the screen as we invite you to sing at home as we worship God. On Mothering Sunday, many of us thank God for the women who have had the greatest impact on our lives and celebrate their unconditional love and sacrifice. For others, however, Mothering Sunday brings mixed emotions and it can take real tenacity and trust in the Holy Spirit to give love and feel loved. So as we worship together in our homes, we remember before God families of all kinds as they navigate the joys and challenges of family life and ask for his blessing upon them. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. So we draw near in worship to our Heavenly Father with full and thankful hearts that we belong to his family and are all equally loved by him. And so as we remember the beauty of the creation that he has given to us all to share, we sing for the beauty of the earth. As always, the members of our church family who have helped bring us our music. I hope you have enjoyed listening or singing along at home. 
Now we come to that time when we put aside all those things which we have got wrong, knowing that we will always receive God's forgiveness. And so let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others and our failure to love as Christ has loved us. Your love gives us life from the moment of conception. We fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good. We seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. We ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our readings from God's word this morning are brought to us by Ruth. The first reading is taken from 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 7, and is titled, Praise to the God of all comfort. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as we share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of St Luke. It's chapter 2 verses 33 to 35. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the word of the Lord. Well, thank you, Ruth, for bringing us our readings from God's word this morning. And we're going to sing again as we remember Mary, the mother of our Lord. And after our hymn, our sermon is brought to us by the Venerable Claire Wood, the Archdeacon of Loughborough. It is a joy and a pleasure to welcome her as our preacher this morning.
Good morning and welcome to our service this morning and particularly as we consider Mothering Sunday and our readings. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Well, what a day it is. Mothering Sunday. It's a day where uh, normally we see uh, balloons, cards, chocolates, flowers, even wine going from stores to various houses to honour those who have been or have participated in the mothering of others. It's an honouring. It definitely is an honouring. It's a time to pause and reflect. And for many, it's a joyous occasion. And for several, though, it is not. Uh, in this time of COVID, I think it's probably good to remember that not everybody can be united with their mothers. Um, some have lost their mothers. And for some, this time... Is difficult because the relationship with the mar their mother is estranged. But as we hold all of that with what I think is our very modern and slightly uh, more focused on the individual relationship to one side, I want to consider what mothering means a little beyond it. So in our reading from Luke, we encounter the young family, Mary, Joseph and Jesus, as they go to their place of worship, as they go to the temple. And there they encounter Simeon. Uh, Simeon isn't a young man, we know that. And Simeon does not appear to engage in that normal, courteous conversation which engages a family and starts cooing over the baby. Imagine for a moment in days past when we were in our churches and a young family would come in the door with the baby and normally a crowd gathers around, don't they? Doesn't he look like you? Isn't he bonny? Does she sleep well at night? Are you sleeping well? You know the sort of conversations I mean. No, that's not Simeon's way at all. Mm -mm. Simeon says, can I offer you a blessing? Well, he doesn't even say, can I offer you? Simeon gives them a blessing. And then having given the blessing, there's this word of prophecy, which absolutely are not what you'd expect or necessarily want when you go to your place of worship to give thanks, that moment of sacrifice. Simeon decides that this is what he's been called to do. We know that he's been there a long time. And so he comes up and he says to Mary, you know, your son, your child has got a destiny. And that destiny is a really challenging one. For he then reveals that it is going to be um, quite a burden. It's to be the rise and the fall of many of Israel. And more than that, that Jesus will in fact be destined, uh, that he will be a sign that's opposed. Now, as a parent, that's not a great thing to hear, is it? Your child whom you love, you've brought to the temple, is actually going to have a difficult life. He's going to be opposed. He's got a huge responsibility just placed upon his shoulder. What is your instinct? What would your instinct be if you were in that situation? I suspect it would be uh, one of protection. One thinking, um, it's okay, I hear those things can happen. So how might I walk with my child as they journey in their growth to adult life? That might ensure that these things aren't really what's going to happen. How can I minimise what they're going to face? What can I do to encourage them to be safe? Well, Simeon doesn't allow much time for that thinking, because by the time we get to the end of the sentence, we realise that his words are not just about Jesus. His words are also inclusive for Mary, and they're not great. 
Not only does she hear about her son's issues and challenges that lie ahead, Simeon then reveals to her that she will have herself, you know, pierced to the very sword, um, sorry, pierced to the very soul like a spy sword. Not an easy thing. You're going to suffer so much so that your soul will be pierced. Do you want to be a mother? Do you want to exercise mothering? Is this the calling you have, Mary, to look after this child so much so that it's going to end up not only in hurting him, but you will suffer too? Well, we know that she doesn't step away from the mothering call. We know actually that she stands by him throughout the life. No matter what falls, she's there. And that must have been challenging. To exercise mothering is to exercise the love of God so deeply within us that you walk together knowing that it might be a painful outcome, that you embrace that outcome, and yet you still step in to walk with someone on their journey. As a Christian community, I think I see much of that going on at the moment in covid the response through people who have created food banks, who've been part of networks that have looked after the well-being through telephone calls, prayer networks, uh, people who've been working around uh, mental health and well-being, people who are volunteering to help at the vaccine centres. I mean, the list is endless. But these are people who, in doing so, also know the risks that they're running. And yet they still persist in exercising the mothering gift of love to the others. It's a community affair. It's not an individualistic affair, a transactional arrangement. This is so much more. This is exactly what it means to be the body of Christ. As a child, I can tell you that things were always a little challenging. And yet, uh, when things were really difficult, both from a security and a financial perspective, it was a Christian community that stepped in. There were things of meals that would arrive or even um, occasional uplifting events. I remember that they were doing a day trip, a Sunday school trip, to be honest. Um, we couldn't afford it. No way. It was to Bognor Regis. And uh, some of you may be discovering Bognor Regis this year. Who knows? But to Bognor Regis. And not only had they ensured that we could go and, and funded it, but they provided sandwiches. And I remember those sandwiches particularly well. They were egg sandwiches. Uh, stale egg sandwiches are a delight to all, but they were still food. And we had an amazing day. But it was the gift of mothering, that ability to see the need and step in and provide in a sacrificial way that bound somebody in a relationship that perhaps was something new and, well, could have been dangerous, but actually it was a huge plus. And as communities, I think we're called to do that because that Christian community did not judge the family I lived in, but stepped beyond it and even more than that, empowered us to move into a new place, to become people transformed in a new way. Such is the gifting of those in our own churches, like each of us, disciples and followers of Christ. We are called to make sure that we don't judge others and we don't make it a burden of others to walk and try and resolve their own problems. We are called to step in we're called to be enablers of Christ's love. We are called to be mothering to one another for the whole community. Now, I'm not suggesting that that's easy. For some, shielding has meant we've only been able to stay at home. And for others, limited contact with those we've loved means that we've had to rely on others to fill in things we would normally do. But as Christians and followers of Christ, we've been able to do several things. We've been able to pray for those we know who are in need. We've been able to exercise encouragement through prayer and direct contact via the phone. We've been able to encourage new endeavours, food banks. We've been able to express and share our hope as it comes as part of our faith, bringing opportunities through digital services such as these. 
The provision of love placed in our hearts through Christ is something that cannot be diminished. And yet in response, once we have that in our hearts, we are called to be mothers to our communities, men and women alike. We are called to say aloud that which we see is unjust. We are called not only to state that it's unjust, but we're called to make remedy. As a local community, as a church, as a diocese and beyond, we are called to be mothering to our neighbours. And that means being brave. It means trusting in God, stepping out in a new way, even though we know we are at risk, risk of pain and hurt. When I hear the conversation in Luke, when I hear Simeon saying to Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul, and yet she still stepped out to honour her mothering responsibilities. So I hear that replicated to us. As Christ people, as his disciples, we are truly called to transform. So the blessing I have for you today incorporates a wonderful opportunity to celebrate mothers, of course. But the blessing I have is perhaps an echo a little echo of Simeon, that we might recognise that we are called to make a difference, to exercise our mothering gifts to those who are in need, our mothering gifts to be able to take what we have and transform those who are struggling and broken without judgment, to be a light in times of darkness, to bring joy to each other, in doing so, I warn you, this journey is not for the faint-hearted, but the rewards are immense. For although we might travel and be find on our way pain, at the end of our journey, the blessing of living and being reunited in Christ is the best thing we could hope for. So today I wish you a very happy Mothering Sunday. May it be a gift to you and you a gift to others in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you, Claire, for helping us reflect on God's word and its meaning for us in our lives. You may have noticed behind me my pink stole, and it reminds us of Mary, who was there at Christ's beginning. And I wear it in Advent and we remember Mary and at Christ's ending, at the cross with him as he died, remembering the pains and the joys of motherhood. But we remember that we are part of God's family through what Christ has done for us. And so let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayers are led for us this morning by Anne. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you today, all on different parts of our journey. Some are searching, some are feeling lost, some are hurting, some are feeling loved. Wherever we are and whatever we feel, we come to you as our parent who understands, knows and walks with us. As we journey with you, we know there will be joy as families meet and celebrate being together as much as we can in these present times. Children telling mothers how wonderful they are and mothers telling children how loved they are. We also hear sounds of mourning. We pray for, for those for whom today is a reminder of loss, a reminder that mum is not with them anymore. We pray for peace. We pray for comfort. We pray that you might pick them up and carry them today. 
We think of those for whom family feuds have caused rifts, which means they cannot see their parents, children or grandchildren, and ask that those differences can somehow be healed with your loving guidance. As we journey with you, we taste the sweetness of new life. We thank you for children, the way they smile, the way they brighten our lives. Help us to welcome children into our family, loving them unconditionally as you love every one of us. We also taste the bitterness of those for whom today is a sorrowful and painful reminder of their childlessness. We pray for those who have desperately wanted to be parents and have not been able to be. We pray that you might bring sweetness into their lives through the blessings of others. We pray for comfort. We pray that you might pick them up and carry them today. As we journey with you, we see the beauty in family life. We see how you have blessed and cared for us. Help us to trust you as the future unravels before our eyes. We also remember those for whom the future is not what they expected to see. We pray for those who have lost a child, who were looking forward with joy, only to have dreams shattered. We pray for peace and comfort. We pray that you will pick them up and carry them today. As we journey with you, we remember the comforts of home, the smell of baking, a delicious meal, and all the familiar things we have known. We thank you for what you have provided. We also remember that not everyone has enough, that not everyone can experience the comforts of home. We pray for those children who have no home, who have nobody they can call mum or dad. We pray for those who do not have enough food or money. We pray that you will provide. We pray that you will pick them up and carry them today. We thank you for all those wonderful people who care for other people's children when they have no one else to love them. May your blessing be upon them in their invaluable work to nurture and cherish all those in their care. As we journey today, we reach out our hands to you. We know that when we put our hand in your hand, we can rely on your guidance, your love, your arms that carry us when life is hard. We also remember that those we love who have not reached out their hands to you or have let go, our children who do not know you, parents, partners, siblings, wider families and the people we care about deeply. We pray that they may reach out, take your hand and choose to follow. Loving God, wherever we are and whatever we feel, we come to you as our parent, the one who understands, knows and walks with us every day of our lives. Continue to bless and keep us safe in your loving arms. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you, Anne, for leading us in prayer. And we now conclude our time of prayer by saying together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And please, at home, do feel free to use whichever version or language you are most comfortable with. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Well, our final hymn for this morning, as we remember the greatness of the Lord, as Mary remembered that greatness, is Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. Oh, he's my 
light that deeds his arm has done, his mercy shone from age to age the same, his holy name, the Lord, the mighty one. Tell us thy soul the greatness of his might, as and dominions made their glory by proud hearts and stars. Thank you once again to the members of our church family for bringing us our music this morning and helping enrich our worship. Well, before I finish with God's blessing, just a couple of notices. As ever, you're welcome to any of our online worship, our Compline services at nine o'clock in the evenings on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, our 10 a.m. morning prayer on Thursdays, and of course, back here on Sunday for our 10 a.m. morning worship. There is also a draft pastoral scheme that you need to be aware of and I'm going to read it to you now, but there is also a slide at the end of our service and also notices pinned on our church doors and information on our Facebook page. This draft proposal provides for the termination of the plurality established for the benefits of Peckleton and the benefits of Gruby and Ratby. The transfer of the parish of Peckleton with Tooley from the deanery of Sparkenhoe East to the deanery of Sparkenhoe West, Hinckley and Bosworth in the same Archdeaconry of Loughborough. The benefice of Newbold de Verdon, Barlston and Kirkby Manor Mallory and the benefice of Peckleton shall be united to create a new benefice, which shall be named Newbold de Verdon, Barlston, Kirkby Mallory and Peckleton, their constituent parishes to remain distinct. For the appointment of the first incumbent of the new benefice and for her parsonage house and for the future patronage arrangements for the new benefice, all in the Diocese of Leicester. Just so you know, materially in our benefice, this will not make any difference to how things operate. But if you do have any questions and you want to know more, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me. Well, praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. And so may God who gave birth to all creation bless us. May God, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, bless us. May God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless us. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and for ever. Amen. In peace, may we love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Yeah.